evening and welcome back to another video. We start with news of a roll-up roll-up for BitTorrent and how to get the airdrop and how this is going to, going to work. So the first thing you need to know about the BitTorrent BTT airdrop is that it's not just a one-off event. It's good to know for people who um, often miss out on events a number of times. This is the first one begins a series of monthly airdrops that will run until February 2025. So you've got six years not to miss out. There are 990 billion BTT tokens created on the Tron blockchain. Of those, 10.1% have been designated for airdrops to TRX holders uh, over the next six years. So what's that, about 99 uh, billion? That's actually a lot. Um, starting on Monday, which is today, I guess. Furthermore, the monthly address will get bigger as time goes on, increasing once every February. Think of Tron and BitTorrent like a razor and a blade. Justin Sun, co-founder of Tron, CEO of BitTorrent, told Coindesk via a spokesperson, you need both to create a new internet economy driven by decentralization. We are seeding BTT to deliver a marketplace of innovations and applications across the web. When the Tron blockchain reaches a block height of 6.6 .6 million, the team will take a snapshot of TRX balances and split up the first airdrop proportionally to all TRX holders. The first 12 airdrops will each distribute 990 million BTT tokens. Holders of TRX will receive 0.11 BTT, BTT next week according to Binance. Uh, currently ranked the 8th largest blockchain in market capitalization according to CoinMarketCap, Tron is currently worth 1.75 billion as of writing. Um, that's down to the value compared to when ERC20 version migrated. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, so it stood at 3 billion, so it's kind of lost, kind of gone down almost half. Um, so I think it's important. So I'll go back to my previous question. Is is BTT worth it? I don't know. I, I don't really understand how much or how popular this is going to be. And, you know, a few years ago, I say five, six years ago, there was a massive, massive hype around BitTorrent and that sort of um, downloadability. But um, it was always had a dark undertone of illegality. <coughs> illegality, not legality, of piracy and things like that. And, you know, we had the Pirate Bay and the whole BitTorrent stuff around Pirate Bay and how to seed files and stuff like that. And so the idea of see, BitTorrent, you get rewarded for seeding obviously they want you to see legal stuff not illegal because we're going to run into the same problems um as did people at kim.com with mega upload and that sort of stuff so you know if you're holding tron in my opinion it's not it's not worth selling it now if you're going to be getting btt every every so often for six years and there's going to be 99 billion tokens distributed in six years so I actually unfortunately sold a lot of my Tron. I've got a very small amount left. I obviously won't sell that now. Um, I may, may, may even just fact that f even though I still don't fully understand BTD, just buy a little bit more Tron because it's obviously it's very low price, although it's, it's gone up recently, um, just to uh, obtain BTD on the basis that it's, hey, it's free. Um, but I still need to see a full roadmap of exactly how is... Uh, BitTorrent, uh, sorry, uh, but yeah, BitTorrent token going to work, and what sort of um, real world value is it going to have, and what is it going to do? And ultimately, that's the main thing. Yes, I I could end up holding ten million BTT, you know, but ten million worth zero, exactly. So. Um, it's great to see that you know, they're not just doing it one-off instant and people will have plenty of opportunity. And I think the idea is for people to keep buying Tron. So if they just do it once, what often happens is people load up with an, a, 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 um, a, a token and then wait for the airdrop. As soon as the airdrop's over, they, they cash out and invest in something else once they've got their airdrop. So for now, for six years, there's going to be airdrops and Tron are going to hold this uh, airdrop every Feb according to this writing but the best thing will be is that you will have to um, hold Tron so you would ultimately have to be holding Tron for a period of time if you want all the airdrops 
need to hold Tron for six years. If you want some, maybe one or two years. But the idea is there'll be loads of yeah. It says it. That exactly what I'm saying. That said, even the strategy by Tron to encourage its supporters to hold, um, and that's exactly what this is. It's a very clever way. Obviously, Justin Sun's not not a uh, um, unintelligent person. Not very smart. He's obviously the CEO of Tron. Although I, I I don't I dislike when they seem to overhype news which is not news I think or not newsworthy. Um, but definitely a good way to increase the value. The more people are holding, the increased scarcity uh, and basic economics of uh, supply and demand. There's high demand and there's not enough supply, the price goes up. So, uh, I mean, what will this do to to the Tron price? That's a good question. So what are we sitting at now? So it's sitting at 0 0.02. Um, and I think Tron's, if we look at its all-time high, was 25 cents. So... Um, that's that's a massive x so what's that 12 12 and a half x on what it is now not bad return if you're holding a lot obviously so um saying that even if you had a hundred dollars worth of tron if it ever was going to go to reach that price along with btt then you've got 12 uh 1250 dollar worth of uh tron but why is BTT actually looking? I don't even know. So obviously BTT is massively low because the volume is so high. Um, 990 billion. I mean, volume is pretty good. 108 million. Um, I don't know if this is regular volume for... for for. Uh, no, actually, it's a, normally a lot, lot more. So it's actually come down a bit. Um, but yeah, not bad for a... a, a um, a token which has only been re released recently so um, interesting to see what happens with Tron if we go back to yeah and whether you guys are looking at BTT or Tron is it a coin that gets overlooked it has got, it's got a lot of good factors now of dApps um, it's got a lot of good factors of um, its speed and obviously they are trying to have a proper DAP store. Um, so yeah, I mean, like I said, I, I hold some. I may be buying some more if I have some spare surplus capital. Um, just throw a little bit more to, just to hold it, but fully understand the project, not at the moment. Anyway, let, let's move on. So looking at Bitcoin in Venezuela, Bitcoin trading in Venezuela just hit an all-time high despite a 40% price premium. According to the data provided by local Bitcoins, a peer-to-peer -peer cryptocurrency trading platform, the weekly volume of Bitcoin in Venezuela achieved a new all-time high. Measured in Bitcoin, the weekly volume of BTC to Venezuelan Bolivia VS pair increased to 2,454 BTC in US dollars. Uh, that is worth 8.9 million per week and 1.2 million per day. Wow. Mao Dell, a cryptocurrency researcher, said that the volume would be high if the 40% premium in Venezuela market is priced in. Um, amidst the, the intense economic recession and uncertainty in the country's government, the Venezuelan Bolivia, uh, sorry, Bolivar, has essentially become valueless. I think it's like about 17, 1.7 million percent uh, inflation in Venezuela. Obviously, you've got the whole political issue between uh, is it um, Morada and Guerrero, Guerrero, about um, who's going to be rightfully um, president uh, of Venezuela. But also, you've got the whole economic climate of um, uncertainty in the country. So probably what they're doing is that before that they were probably just printing loads of currency, which leads to quantitative easing. And quantitative easing just means making making your um, uh, currency worthless. If you keep printing so much of it, and this is why Bitcoin will always remain valuable, if you keep printing something, it becomes too saturated. And once it's saturated, like a a a, a, um, a uh, you know orange juice you mix with water, eventually the taste goes, and you're just left with water. And that's exactly what's happened with um, the uh, Bolivar. It's just become worthless. People are just going to 
uh, Colombia and they're just using that money to make ornaments because the money is absolutely useless. So this potentially could be the first country, I think, that's going to accept a cryptocurrency as its um, main currency. They've obviously tried with the Petro, I believe, and I'm not too sure what's happened with that, whether it's actually worked or it's totally f um, flattened because the Petro was meant to be against oil and whether people can trust that from the government that they is actually priced against oil and they had that oil. So the idea is you should, you should do cash in your petrol and get oil barrels like you would cash in a, um, a cryptocurrency which is linked to gold, like DGX DAO. You should have to go and give it in and say, I want my gold now or give me my gold equivalent. So using uh, either Bitcoin or Dash, which is obviously the other one they're using um, in the country, potentially could mean that it could be the first country in the world to adopt it at the main currency and people are obviously buying it because they need to transact and they're not going to use their own currency because it's absolutely worthless um, so potentially could this be the first of many cases I know Argentina is in trouble you've got uh, maybe another country South America in trouble potentially we don't know what's going to happen with the, the EU in terms of Brexit the worst case scenario could, a country could eventually go that way. No, nobody is is unaffected by uh, a recession and a quantitative easing. Um, we had it in the UK with um, the the credit crisis, and obviously the way our government's laid out and how democracy works in the UK and blah blah, and less or well, less on the surface corruption. We never got to where Venezuela is. Other countries could go that way. So, in a very perverse way. If countries start failing and they have to adopt a different currency, they're not going to invent a new currency. They're not going to adopt the US dollar. They would rather adopt something like Bitcoin, which they can use, uh, similar to how Iran is doing it, is um, either inventing their own cryptocurrency, maybe along with other cryptocurrencies, to avoid sanctions from the US. So the more countries should start doing this. Now, if Venezuela started using uh, Bitcoin as a main currency, and Iran did, and um, Russia, then these countries would interact with each other for trade, because they would out, be out of the bounds of sanctions now, because they're trading in different currency. That then releases the control of the USD on countries around the world. Um, who knows, in 10 years time, 15 years, 20 years time, it might be oil versus BTC or oil versus um, XRP, or oil versus EOS, because at the moment, oil is only measured against the US dollar. And it's been like that for about 30, 40 years now. So the only currency it's weighted against, is, or traded against is the US dollar. You can't trade against anything else. Um, what happened, you know, one day it could be Bitcoin. Um, and that'll be very, very interesting. Uh, and that's where currencies will start disappearing in terms of fiat currencies and um, cryptocurrencies or state currencies may take its place. So um, I am pretty sure that this is going to go one way and the one way is a country like Venezuela adopting the, a, a cryptocurrency, whether it be Bitcoin, uh, whether they have enough in the world to distribute out like that. Again, scarcity means price increase. So. <clears throat> always good and uh, liquidity means um, stronger market so what do you guys think very interesting topic huh I, I, I certainly um, didn't expect to be thinking on this wavelength while reading it but as you really start to understand what the possibilities are and this is not a massive massive country now if you think other countries in the world who, who would be holding BTC like Russia uh, like Iran even like the US and they were get using things like local Bitcoin and, and um, liquidity slowly starts increasing and the prices start increasing, then you're in this very strong, strong market, which is 10, 20 trillion. And then there's much, so much more trust in the market because it becomes almost a point where the market can go down, but it's not breakable like it is now. It's not fragile. It's, it's, it's solid. It's a very solid structure of gra gra glass. It's not brittle. So, yeah. Anyway, let's uh, let's move on. Again, back to the uh, scams and hacks. So this time it's a scam. So it's again making you guys aware. <coughs> MetaMask, which is a, um, a Chrome plugin for Ethereum, <coughs> there's a fake one on the App Store on the Google Play. So 
A form of malware that replaces victims' cryptocurrency wallet addresses has been discovered for the first time in an app on the Google Play Store. Security firm ESET published a blog uh, post on Friday um, saying that the, fir- that the malware known as Clipper intercepts the content of the clipboard and it finds the addresses of, of online cryptocurrency wallets that can replace them with addresses owned by the attacker. The malware-laden app discovered by ESET impersonates a service called MetaMask that provides access to Ethereum decentralized applications or dApps. The malware main purpose is steal MetaMask user credentials and private keys able to access their Ethereum funds. However, it can also intercept BTC and Ethereum wallets address copied into the clipboard. Oof, very scary. MetaMask does not currently offer an app product for the mobile devices. So Again, just being very, very careful because this app looks exactly like the desktop app, and the desktop app is it just sits in your uh, tray in, for example, Chrome. You log in and you can see your uh, Ethereum balance, and you can link it to uh, like um, uh, Ethereum Block Explorer and look at your ERC20 tokens. You can also transact from it, so you can send and receive through this app. Obviously, the private keys you have access to, and so this way you, it would have access to your private keys trying to log in, trying to set this up. So, as usual, some uh, pesky um, uh, person trying to get crypto from people, trying to steal crypto, has made an app. And I don't know how many people have downloaded this, but it, I'm glad it's been obviously found out. But keep an eye on products you do download from from places even on the Apple store I mean as well as we think Apple is at vetting at um, malware um, there's always a chance something can get through so always have a look at the product and where the publisher is you know if it's MetaMask it's not going to say it's been made by the company it'll be say something else for example if I'm downloading uh, the Binance app it's going to have the Binance Corporation info underneath it's not going to have some random uh, publisher so um, if you be aware, look at what you're downloading. If you're unsure, always go to the official website. So if MetaMask website speaks about uh, an iOS app or a Google app, um, that's fine. But if it doesn't, you know it's going to be a lot of nonsense and probably, you know, exactly in this case, malware. So just keep an eye on that. Be careful out there. Someone's always trying to steal your money, just like it is when you're uh, if you're walking around with cash. And people can see it, and opportunities will always take it. Or you leave the car door open of your, you know, and someone sees your phone on the on the seat. Opportunists will take, and this is exactly what it is. This opportunist, they make an app. Even if they got 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 uh, amounts of ETC, ETH, sorry, um, it's something. You know, for a program, it may not take much to create this app, make it look very simple. Just like it does for, um, you know, just like the, if it was an actual official app, um, people buy into it and, and hey, they made some money. And just like how you see on Twitter, and I mentioned this before, um, send me 0.1 B, uh, BTC or, or ETH and I'll send you double that. And obviously, people keep doing this because it works for some. People catch on, but that, that point is too late. You know, it'd be interesting as an experiment to see how much money that you made from that and obviously return the funds, but then make people aware, hey, this was a security test and you failed it massively. No one's going to give you something for nothing. No one's ever going to give you one Ethereum by sending them half Ethereum. Logically, it doesn't make sense, but sometimes people get blinded by greed. And unfortunately, that's exactly why people are doing this to steal for greed. People are sending money to get more money for greed. So keep plugging away, keep holding what you've got, but please be aware of these these scams because there's going to be a lot more coming out this year, next year, the year after, and don't be one who has to say I was caught by this. Anyway, let's let's move on to something more enjoyable. So can can we break out of three thousand eight hundred dollars? Uh, Bitcoin eyes a three point three thousand eight hundred dollar after a high volume breakout. So we'll, we'll have a look. I, do, I just want to talk about the title, the article. I didn't really want to discuss too much, but I really want to talk about something which is a bit more interesting. Oh, it's gone up now. It was, it was in the red now. It's in the green. So it's good to see it's up. So first of all, 
you know, we've had another day of steady growth um, ish. Bitcoin price is up what maybe thirty dollars. Um, still progress, and it's uh, nicely tailed off. Some of them are slightly increasing, like Ethereum. Except he's having a bit of a wavy time. Um, however, what I do want to talk about is, regardless of the article, more the fact that what we need to, where we need to get to. Um, so we, like I said yesterday, we we were we need to get past. We need to get into the four thousand, five thousand range. Um, I was reading or listening to a video about a TA who predicts that we would be at six thousand by the end of March. Now. There could be some truth behind the, the the prediction, only because with so much stuff launching in March, we hope um, there was going to be a good run up to to the middle of March or the end of March, and if that ties in with back, then if we can get to uh, you know four or five thousand by middle and then by the end, we can be in a five to five and a half to six thousand dollar Bitcoin and a market. Uh, which uh, um, uh, expresses that value of a six thousand, along with others, um, market. Then, then we're again in, in. Then we've got yeah, we're in a bull, and then we will be hard to, to stop. But we need to sort of get to that stage we're in between um, four and that, four thousand and five thousand dollars. And something I read this morning, which is quite interesting. My only concern was this: was that. Um, I think the CEO of New York, York, New York Stock Exchange or, or the ICE was talking about back then how they're going to spend $24 million this year on back itself. Obviously, they've, been, they've uh, gained $182 million in funding. The funding will go into various projects with back. Um, and of that, they're going to spend $24 million this year. Uh, obviously, probably going to be paying staff, growing the desk, whatnot, um, marketing things like that but I think the question came up about when's back launching they said it's gonna be launching later this year now I don't like when people say later this year that's not a time frame um, I'm not sure why they didn't make or this individual didn't mention March or, or April or let's once we get the CFTC approval I'm hoping that's just a comment in terms of the fact that they don't actually have a date uh, tied in just yet um, maybe we'll get some more information um, uh, at the end of this month, so we've got about two weeks um, to get a proper date of when back is going to launch. But if we're sticking to a March time frame and we're sticking to a prediction of a trader that we're looking at $6,000 Bitcoin by the end of March, then then this, this ties up. Um, if we don't get back by April and uh, there isn't anything else coming out of the market apart from just good sentiment and good good um, uh, news that so-and-so is going to open this and they, they were looking to in March then then we're going to be running sideways for months and we'll be, we'll be hovering around a $3,100 Bitcoin to a $4,200 Bitcoin for the next few months if, if things don't really change and yeah I mean you can keep buying in my opinion because eventually this news will come just like uh, the the inevitability of an ETF, the inevitability of back because I've already invested so much money and they're going to just pull out now. Then back and other things will happen. It's just at the moment information and dates aren't concrete. Everything's Q1 or Q2. So um, I leave it there in a optimistic approach because I believe this stuff will happen, um, whether it be in the next couple of weeks or in the next month, it will happen and. Um, I agree with the prediction of a six thousand dollar Bitcoin by the end of March, um, and then we start increasing um, year end. Uh, I guess we'll see in, by the end of the first quarter uh, where we sit with where we are and where we can go to. Of course, anything is possible. Um, Tom Lee was still predicting a twenty five thousand dollar Bitcoin at the start of December by the end of December. So. And that time it was sitting around four or five thousand dollars, so or even less, four thousand um, dollars. So six thousand is 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 not certainly difficult at all. Uh, what are you guys thoughts? Are we going up? Are we going sideways? Are we going down? Are we, are we still not bottomed out? Do we need to get three thousand before we shoot up? I'm starting to 
believe less and less about this bottom and it just seems to be conjecture and talk just to keep prices down so people um, can throw themselves into the market which is fair enough because we, we understand the market is manipulated and it's manipulated for everyone so uh, I'm not just the special one here anyway I'll leave it there guys um, I hope to see you in the next video please like and subscribe and thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video goodbye <laughs>